Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Show Crafts. I'm Sarah and today I wanted to catch you up on a little spinning experiment that I've been uh, thinking about doing and working on lately and that's spinning some art yarn um, using a few different techniques. Um, so last fall at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, which is held at the end of September, beginning of October time, um, I got to take a class with Jillian Moreno. And if you don't know her book, Yarn Texture, um, you should definitely check that out. I'm going to put another link in the show notes. I have mentioned her book before. Um, it's a great survey spinning book. Uh, she will tell you um, about different kinds of fibers and how they interact when you spin them and then talk about um, different spinning techniques and how to also work with um, fiber that's been dyed in order to do different things with the the way that the fiber has been dyed so whether it's you know long roving or in bats or other kinds of preparations you know how you can blend colors or keep colors the way that they are um, in the fiber. She's just got a lot of great information in that book. Um, but it was also great to take a class from her and I'm not huge on workshops. I, I tend to get kind of bored in workshops and um, my mind starts to wander and I end up not paying attention as I should. Uh, I think I kind of blame my early Montessori education on that. Um, if you know Montessori, it's kind of a self-guided type of education system where you can, you're, it's not by rote, so you, you don't have you know kids in a classroom all doing the same thing at the same time. And that kind of learning style really stuck with me, so workshops can be tricky for me, but I really like Jillian's class because she allowed a lot of time to play, um, but then she would also bring us back in and show us you know, specific techniques along the way um, and encourage us to try things even if we were a little afraid of them or maybe it was a technique we had tried in the past and not had a lot of success with. Um, she was really great about that. So um, that class really inspired me. Unfortunately, I don't make a huge amount of time to get uh, onto my spinning wheel as I should. And that's one of my goals for this year is to, to make more time for spinning. Um, so, but one of the, one of the things we learned in that class is we played around with color and combining colors while spinning. Um, so rather than, you know, combing or carding colors together and then spinning them as one preparation, she actually got us to spin two pieces of roving at the same time, hold them in your hands and spin them at the same time. And I can show you um, a little bit of a sample that some of this was plied from individual colors and then some of this was actually spun at the same time. Um, and that's what got me thinking about more art yarns and playing around with color. Um, so what I did at the wheel this time around is that I took some strips of dyed roving. They were different colors, but they were each a distinct color. Each strip was one solid. And I practiced that technique of holding two colors in my hand at the same time and drafting them together. Um, one thing I learned in class and that Jillian, you know, kind of told us is that you can't be too concerned with getting exactly the same amount of each color as you're drafting them together. That's almost impossible to do. So the fun in this technique is the kind of randomness that you get and the kind of loss of control that you have and just, um, it's almost like going crazy with finger paints or something, I'm trying to draw another analogy. Um, and if you're kind of controlling and precise normally in your craft, as I am with my knitting, um, it's actually quite liberating to try a technique, technique like this where you can't control it 100% of the time and you just have to kind of roll with what you get. So I wanted to try that technique again. I also wanted to try doing a thick and thin yarn because um, a lot of art yarns have, you know, a ton of texture in them. And then the other thing that I tried was actually spinning in whole locks, dyed locks of fibers into the yarn itself. So rather than um, just having one smooth continuous yarn, I was trying to add in locks. So let me show you what I came up with. Um, and that's this crazy looking art bat. Um, you can see here, here's some of my 
you know, two color at a time, thick and thin stuff. Um, and it is pretty thick and thin. It's definitely got a lot of twist in it. I did not ply this yarn. I decided to just leave it as a very kind of <laughs> energized single. Um, and I haven't even washed this yet. I don't know if I'll wash it or not. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of follow-up reading on art yarns to know whether people usually do wash them. I guess I guess you probably would to try to set the twist. Um, but anyway, I think it's it, you know it's cool and it's not like anything I would normally buy or or have done before. Um, but it was fun. So here's a, one example of a place where I tried to spin a whole lock into the yarn. I'm not sure how well attached that is. I probably could take it out if I pulled on it. Some places I managed to get the lock more fully integrated into the yarn. So this one you can see is kind of spun and it's making this thick place here and then just the little tip is sticking out, which is sort of more like what I've seen in other people's art yarn. Um, I'm by no means an expert on this. This is just my first attempt, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, now spinning the whole locks did provide a challenge and I, I anticipated this after having watched a fair number of YouTube videos of other people spinning locks into their um, art yarn or adding other things like uh, I've seen people add, you know, sort of spangles or charms that have a, a thread. So the thread is what you end up spinning um, into the fibers, but then you have this like chunk of jewelry or, you know, blob of um, sequins or something like that on the end. And so anytime you have, you know, a big object like a bead or a chunk of fiber, you have to make sure that that's going to go through the whole uh, drafting and take up zone on your wheel. Um, now my wheel is a shocked ladybug. I only have one spinning wheel. Um, and it has an okay sized orifice. It's probably, I would say half an inch in diameter or so. Um, it's not skimpy, but it's not large either. Um, and so as I, as I anticipated, um, oftentimes the lock would get stuck. You know, I'd spin it and it would get into the fiber and then as it started to go onto the bobbin, it would get stuck somewhere in that path. Um, and I would just have to stop and use my hand and kind of unpick everything from wherever it was sticking and even unhook it from the hooks on the flyer to um, move the bobbin and get the yarn mounted onto the bobbin um, by hand. So, um, you know, not, not a great process, not a great setup, but I wanted to try this technique of spinning lock, whole locks into yarn first um, before I even, you know, entertain the idea of maybe buying some other specialized equipment. Um, and I don't know that the, the wheel that I have even would accommodate um, any kind of special art yarn setup. I, I believe the orifice on that is pretty fixed. So, you know, if I was really going to take off on this, I'd probably actually get a dedicated spinning wheel for art yarns. Um, and there are a couple of different styles. The country spinner is the one that I'm most familiar with. And that has a very large orifice on it, you know, a good inch or so diameter, possibly more. Um, and that allows you to pass objects and, you know, big chunks of fiber um, through there so you can really get, you know, a lot of texture going on. Um, that said, I probably will try art yarn again. I don't know if I'll try whole locks, but I did like this multicolored effect. Um, I liked spinning with multiple colors at a time, trying to just see how that would work out. Um, and I'd like to play around with some other art yarn techniques. I know there are all different kinds of things like coarse bun yarns and um, all kinds of stuff, probably things I have not um, heard of yet or, or developed knowledge of. Um, I don't know that I will continue to spend a lot of art yarn, um, but it certainly is fun for a one-off, you know, occasional kind of a project. And I think my wheel will be fine for the amount that I plan to do with this. Um, 
I tend to very be very product focused in all of my crafting and so you know my spending is more likely to be okay I'm gonna spend this kind of fiber in this specific way to get this kind of a result so that I can make socks or so that, that I can knit a sweater um, but part of this um, experiment to do art yarn is is to help me not be quite so rigid um, so to get me to kind of loosen up a little bit and try something new um, even if I don't really like it or even if I may not want to do it all the time um, just to try something new and um, let go of that kind of rigidity so I think that's important to do in many areas of life um, but certainly in your hobbies or anything that you're doing for fun um, give yourself you know place to be creative messy um, inspired you know not have a plan just kind of go with the flow I think that's important so and creating art yarn definitely um, did that for me um, I've also found a couple of people that um, do spinning that I've been inspired by lately and so I follow them on Instagram and I may have even mentioned a couple of them recently um, but I will also link to their either their web pages if they have them or um, Instagram profiles so that you can follow them as well. Um, I think it's it's mesmerizing and it's fascinating just to watch other people spin um, even if they're doing a technique or playing with a type of fiber that I may not intend to use. Um, I learn a lot from spinning videos almost more so than knitting videos sometimes. Um, so I want to share those resources with you as well. If you have any favorite techniques for spinning, or if you're trying anything new this year, maybe you're just starting spinning, or uh, maybe you've discovered some new technique that you really like, I'd love to hear about it. Please leave a comment in the notes below this video and let us know, or uh, leave a comment on the blog. And um, thanks again for watching. As always, uh, we will be back next Monday with um, some reports on our upcoming Portland trip our getaway to Portland, Maine, and we'll let you know how that went. Hopefully uh, have some beer tastings to share. So take care, have a great week, and we'll talk to you then.